you need to spend a little bit more time cleaning out the bursal tissue. This is an area that I think a lot of surgeons shortchange themselves and it comes back to haunt them at the most critical time of the procedure, which is tying the knots. Once we have the bursal tissues removed, we now have to devise a strategy for our repair of the rotator cuff. And the immediate thought here is this is a crescent type tear. We can see that that's the tendon edge and we know that that needs to come over to about right here. That's where it tore off. Then you can see we actually have what you might consider a reverse L type tear. This has come back into the infraspinatus here and then off of the supraspinatus. And again, if we look at this corner here and bring this down, that looks like where the tissue wants to lie. And then we'll have a split between these two edges of the tendon back in here. There are different strategies in trying to resolve this. This is the corner that we need to get down to this edge right here. Some surgeons elect to first put a suture anchor right here at this corner and pass the sutures through here and bring this down. And then the next steps that you would have is one or two more anchors more anteriorly to bring down this edge and then side to side stitches here. Another way to address this is to put your side to side stitches first, which is, a, a t which is typically a good strategy. And the reason why is when you resolve the component that goes from lateral to medial, you bring the tissue, you reduce the tissue, but you still give yourself access to passing your sutures under the remaining edge of the tendon. Now we understand our tear, we have to prepare for the biology of tendon to bone healing. And so the first thing that we're going to do at this point is we're going to clean off the soft tissue of our greater tuberosity. So we'll first start by removing the soft tissues and we'll have our assistant abduct or abduct the arm and then externally rotate slightly and just deliver that to our shaver blade. We want to be very careful not to remove our subchondral bone, which gives the strength of the fixation for our suture anchors. Now that we have established a site where the tendon can heal and there will be a blood supply in this area, we're ready to initiate our repair of the rotator cuff tendon. So we'll take an 18 gauge needle. What you can see is it's coming in at approximately a 45 degree angle. We can also help ourselves in the beach chair position by easily rotating the arm, external rotation to get an anterior portal, internal rotation to get a posterior portal, bringing the arm up higher to put it off the lateral edge of the greater tuberosity or dropping the arm down to get a better angle into our greater tuberosities. Once we've identified the proper position for our cannula, I prefer these screw in cannulas because they stay in place uh, during the surgical procedure. Our plan at this time is to put in our first suture anchor right at the corner or the elbow of this reverse L tear. We're going to try to identify the best visualization here, which it looks pretty good from that spot. This is a little more posterior, so we'll have our assistant lift up on the elbow a little bit to make sure that our angle stays at a good position for our anchor placement. We're going to put our anchor just off of the edge, which will help reduce this and put this in nice solid bone. The tap was advanced down to the laser line and then one additional turn in my practice to make sure that the anchor is seated below the greater tuberosity. Once the anchor is uh, screwed into the appropriate depth, we'll then loosen it from the handle and then we'll back this out and then we'll check to make sure that the anchor is stable in the soft tissue. We don't want to pull too hard, but it's a good fixation at this point. When we're passing our suture through the posterior cuff, the easiest way, there's, there's many different ways to do it, but the easiest way is to advance to the posterior portal with a device that's known as a penetrator. And here's that device. This is by far the easiest way. And then we're going to grab, and again, we're going to estimate, here's that corner. We're going to repair that over to here. We're going to pass through the tendon. And we're going to come out the front of that tendon. And then we're going to grab our suture. And this, and this one, we have the blue. And we'll just pull this back. And you can see one limb of the blue has a stripe on it and one limb does not. That helps us identify where is the midpoint of the suture. It also helps us identify to ensure that we're not unloading our suture. We're going to go through this part of the tendon again and we'll grab the white suture. I look and see that my 
my stripe suture, which we'll call tiger wire, is going through the loop of the anchor. And if I kept pulling on that, I'm going to unload my suture. So then I just pull the one without the stripe on it, and then we'll make sure that we go through. Okay, so we have our suture in our posterior cuff, and now we're going to place it into our anterior cuff.